story. Today on the show, we're diving into one of the most critical tools in our career toolkits, our resume. Whether you've just started out or you're looking to make a career change or you're aiming to climb higher in the company that you're already within, we're often told that a resume, so this humble document, we're often told it's the first impression that you make on a potential employer. But in India, it almost feels like industries actually run on connections. You first get your job because kisi ke papa ke dost ne aapko bataya ki wahan pe there's a job empty and you can apply for it. And your resume only comes as the third, the fourth step. Now, we want to talk a little bit more about that. We want to understand where a resume can fit in in the Indian job market. And we also want to take another interesting question to the two senior HR professionals we'll have with us on the show today. We want to ask them that in a world where you keep hearing of creative resumes, so you would have heard on the internet, you know, you'll hear again and again something going viral. For example, there was a kid who just in April sent his resume to an employer via Blinkit. You had another kid who turned his entire resume into something that looked like a Google search result. And the question was, what does a good employee look like? His resume came up as the result. When you have things like that happening, how experimental should you be with your resume? Should you just stick to the tried and tested approach? So on Tuesday, if you remember, we looked at colleges abroad. On Wednesday, we looked at what it takes to be well-rounded in today's job market. Today on TBC, we'll tell you how do you get a foot in the door of your dream job and where should a resume? This humble little document, where should it fit into the whole story? Let's go over to the two professionals we have with us here on the show. They're both senior experts within the industry. First joining us on the broadcast is Maya Nair. She's the executive director at Elixir Consulting. It's an organization that helps companies hire industry-wide. So they don't specifically stick to one industry. They actually, they actually cater to and work with industries across the country and they've been doing this for years now, decades now in fact. Let's just go over to Maya to ask her. Maya, we started our audiences off by telling them what is perhaps the truth here in India? That unless it's an entry level job, especially if it's a job where, you know, it's a mid-level job, a senior position, your resume isn't actually, it feels like the thing that's making or breaking it. It feels like you've gotten a job and, you know, somewhere in there, the HR uh, person who's handling the interview will say, remember to send your resume along. So just tell us, how should we look at a resume today? And is it part of a larger bouquet, networking, LinkedIn, all being other parts? How do you see it? So I guess, uh, you know, currently we are seeing a lot of change in the way we are operating thanks to digitalization as well as AI that's coming in. So I think for a resume to get uh, attractive and to, you know, be put it out there, our uh, digital footprint is very important. So the person needs to be aware of, like you mentioned, you know, there are a lot of uh, aspects that we are looking at. So um, the candidate needs to ensure that he has the right digital footprint. Mm -hmm. um, whatever he's putting is his authentic personal brand that he's putting out there. So with contacts, with being already having the right personal brand that he's created, whether it's, you know, on his um, websites that he's doing or he's part of some digital tools that he's been using, uh, a skill-based approach is a right way and the right first step forward in such kind of a system. Okay, Maya, because the organization that you're a part of actually looks at the behind the scenes. So when companies are hiring, they actually come to you. Tell us, how many employers are using AI to screen our resumes? Just break that down for us. How much are computers a part of this whole process? Okay. So, um, you did mention that there are you know, there is also networking that happens in the industry. And a lot of okay. times, you know, it's the comfort factor for a person to, if he knows somebody or is recommended by somebody to be able to actually take and give the responsibility to that person. But there is a huge percentage of jobs that go where the candidates are being called for the interview, which is a complete, clear, transparent process. You know, the jobs are out there. It's put on, it's posted. The organization is looking for the ideal candidates. And I think a resume is a very powerful tool because in such kind of a scenario, that is the first door. You know, you put the step the foot in the door, that's the first way that the person would be able to put his skills across to a completely unknown person. And hence, I give it a lot of importance while the, you know, looking at the resume, 
the format and everything has changed over the years. Earlier we used to call it curriculum vitae, now we call it resume. So, you know, there's a difference there as well in terms of, in the terms. And um, when the person builds the resume, it is showcasing the person's skills, the responsibilities, the accountability that the person has done. So if I, you know, quickly come to your second part of the question where you said, how should a good resume look like? Um, I think the ideal way that the person builds his resume is to not make it too lengthy and to ensure that, you know, they, he's putting his skills, which is the right skills for that particular job. And that's hmm. very important because that's the first step that the recruiter, whoever's screening the resume is going to take a look. And then your next step, you know, in being called for an engine. Okay, we want to ask you, Maya, you've kind of told us a little bit about just how important resumes are. But tell us, uh, in today's day and age, there's an urge to get creative, right? And we were just telling our audiences about some of the creative resumes you hear about. People who've gone with cool digital resumes, they sometimes make videos. And that kind of raises the question, when you have a job that you're applying for, should you take the creative route or should you just stick with the basics? Maybe employers don't want to click on some link you've given them. What's your advice there? I, I feel it doesn't hurt to put it. It, it, if you have one ready and the person who's the employer is, you know, liking that little spunk in the person and wants to take a look and you, if you have it ready, go for it. But a lot of times the employers themselves, because see, there is no time, right? For that, the employer has to go through the resume again, take out time for, you know, looking at the video as well. It would depend a lot on the employer's ability to manage that extra amount but it never hurts you, you know the candidate can always ask saying that should i give it and if the recruiter is okay saying that okay go for it then you know the person can go but you know the, the little bit the loophole in this is if the video is not if the person is really great right and the video is not created nicely that you know it's not edited it's 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 a proper uh you know it's it's the right way to make the video and if it's not done rightly then i think there are lesser chances because you, the person is right out there and there are higher chances if the video is not done well or the person is not speaking in the right kind of energy of getting rejected. So I think one should put it up if they are 100% sure that it's a great video, what they're putting up, they're, it's showing their, showcasing their skills, okay. their confidence, their ability to actually tackle that job, I think then go for it. So your point is take the risky route if you're sure that it'll have dividends, otherwise stay away from it. So just tell us, uh, Maya, Keywords, I just want to ask because you know often they say that have your resume reflect some of the energy of the job posting itself. If the job posting is using certain words, have your resume say that. What is your take there and also tell us beyond the basics that we all know when it comes to resume building. So font choices, the way it's written, beyond that, what are the other things we need to know? Absolutely. So, you know, why I mentioned specific keywords is it is very important while a person is making his resume to know what one, what the person wants and to know what is the job that he's applying for, what is the need of, you know, of the person for that job. So when you apply, you have to also, um, I would say, you know, um, we do say you need to tailor your resume, not changing what you have done but adding to a few tasks because like i mentioned we don't want lengthy resumes we want short crisp brief resumes and it's impossible you know somebody like me have over 20 years if you want to put in everything we've done it's a diverse area right we've done multiple things in multiple jobs but what is that job requiring you may have put it very briefly maybe you need to elaborate a little more for example i'll give you say suppose the job wants you to have experience in varied geographies right working in a diverse environment and in your current you've done large projects on it but your current resume you've just mentioned earlier. maybe you can add one or two more lines more to emphasize the work you've done and the impact that you have in that particular area we are not saying to put in things that you haven't done i mean that is a complete no no but you can add a little bit maybe you, you may re you may remove one or two lines if it's getting too lengthy of maybe something that is not really relevant that you have done and maybe you're very good at, but it's not relevant for this particular role. So hence, if the keywords are particularly on your strengths, what you have done and what is the job, there should be some match and that is when, you know, you would be able to move forward and the resume will actually showcase your skills. 
Okay, Maya, this is a bit of a weird question, um, but I'm going to ask you because you're someone who's been in this industry for decades now. Are there resumes that have stayed with you? So when I say, what's an example of an excellent resume, is there actually something that comes to mind? Okay, so uh, I think it is, um, you know, in, in the um, current situation, there's more people, you know, maybe the first hire that you did or the first difficult position that you closed. So it's more people rather than I would say resume format because it has changed over the years. But I could tell you good resumes that you remember and you want to, when people ask for help, you know, then you are able to give a sample resume. So that way we have, you know, good sample resumes of maybe one of senior, one of middle level and junior level where we know that, uh, you know, it's clean, it's error free, it has clean white spaces, it doesn't have too much color, not too much boxes, mm. you know, is is able to showcase, you know, everything is put in a chronological order neatly with specific emphasis. That's, um, we're for, just showing our audiences you know, what you thought was a good resume. In the Ethos Pathos Logos uh, world, I like, I'm a logo person, I like data. So there, sh there should be some data that is mentioning in the kind of impact percentage that the person would have done. So I think that would call a good resume where you have the right content and put it in, in a good way. Okay, so that footage that we just showed you is, uh, that we just showed our audiences, is an example that you sent us, Maya, of a good resume. So just take a look at that. In that footage, you can see, because this is an employee of a tech, uh, tech field, he's been able to demonstrate very carefully, okay, I increased clicks on a website, for example, by 20%. I was able to drive viewership up by 30%. So he's able to show that in very, very concrete ways on that resume. Okay, Maya, thank you for joining us, for bringing us that. We also have for you, our audiences, a different aspect to this entire discussion. Of course, if you work for an industry like tech, it's very easy to show that this was your impact. It's very easy to show the numbers and the analytics. But what if you don't work for an industry where impact is that easy to manage? What if you work for an industry for example, like media, the one that we work in, or a different industry that's creative, publishing, for example. How do you show future employers the impact you've had in that moment? To talk a little bit more about this, we have one more expert with us this morning. Ujala Sabarwal is with us. She's a senior director at Health Edge India. And she'll share a little bit more about what goes into an ideal resume. So Ujala, we actually, before the show, let me just tell our audiences, we sent you a resume and this was a resume from the media industry because we wanted to ask you your thoughts on a not so good maybe resume but we did our best with it so we put in the basics everyone says that you have to list your schooling your education your then you want to go into your work and what you've achieved then you want to list your skills and then you want to list sometimes your passions and hobbies we gave you a resume we asked you to criticize it tell us more Satoya based on uh, my quick review of the resume uh, uh, there are uh, a lot of areas of improvement that can make it look more effective in uh, capturing the attention of uh, hiring managers and recruiters. Um, a resume, first of all, should be very clear and it should be very focused. Okay. So too much of text or wow. unnecessary information can overwhelm uh, the recruiters and the hiring managers. If recruiters or hiring managers cannot quickly resonate or identify your mm. uh, strengths in your resume, they may just move on. Uh, so adding any relevant information that 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 highlights your skills and your experience that directly is tied to the role that you are applying for, I, I feel focusing on those achievements, the key projects and the results that show your impact is something which is very critical. And removing irrelevant or outdated roles and personal information that actually does not add a lot of value to the position mm. which you're targeting to apply for. For example, um, you know, your unrelated hobbies, your older experiences, which are not aligned with your career goals. The idea is basically to keep it very concise and uh, impactful. One thing, uh, first thing which caught my eye uh, on this resume is that there is no professional summary uh, or objective oh, at the hmm. top of the resume which is a missed opportunity to introduce uh, yourself. Um, it's always best to add a professional summary at the top of the resume, which mm. highlights all your key skills and your years of experience, your area of uh, expertise, and basically, uh, you know, what is it that you have done in order to make an impact 
for the organization. Um, because this is the first section which hiring managers and recruiters uh, uh, look Actually for. Look at. Hmm. The one most important thing uh, to mention in a resume is to quantify your achievements. The work experience in this resume uh, looks good, but uh, it, it lacks measurable results. Right. So quantifying your impact wherever possible is very, very important. Hmm. So even in industries that aren't tech, try to quantify your impact. Okay, just tell us, Sujala, uh, you've told us a little bit about how a resume can look better even when it is achieving all of the basics. But now tell us, if we see a job posting on LinkedIn, what should be the steps that follow after that, apart from sending in your resume? Obviously, you're going to do that. But are there other steps beyond that that you should also be doing? Maybe contacting other employees of the company on LinkedIn. Is that creepy? Just tell us a little bit more. Um, so, Toya, what I feel is when you're applying to a job posting, especially on uh, a platform like that of LinkedIn, you know, sending just your resume, I believe, is not enough hmm. to stand out. Um, ensure your resume and your cover letter are, are pretty much customized to the specific job that you're applying for, like I said. Use the job posting uh, to identify the skills and qualification and reflect those in your resume and cover letter, which which I already spoke about. Now, how do we leverage uh, uh, our LinkedIn connections? Connect with people um, uh, at the company in which you're applying for, even through your mutual connections. Okay. Reach hmm. out to the current employees, especially those who are in the similar roles or in the hiring team. Send a personalized connection request mentioning your interest in the position and, and briefly highlighting your qualifications, if possible. It is, a, it is a great idea to engage with their content on LinkedIn by commenting very thoughtfully on the posts uh, from the company or, or, or from the employees, because this will help you build visibility even before you have applied mm. for that role with that organization. Um, a lot of times we know that even the hiring managers uh, uh, repost the jobs uh, if they are hiring for a their own department, they repost the jobs on uh, uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Hmm. If you are able to identify the hiring manager or the recruiter, nothing like it. Send a LinkedIn message or an email to them and introduce yourself expressing your interest in the role. Touch on that for a second though, you brought up the importance of network and I just want, because that in India sometimes is the is the all defining factor. You know, they say the jobs connections say milte, which is unfortunate. But tell us a little bit about how networking, referencing should feature into all of this, even on your resume. Uh, so Toya, I uh, would say that directly uh, uh, listing references on your resume is not necessary. Hmm. Uh, but you can integrate your network very strategically in your resume. What does that look like? Uh, if you have strong recommendations on platforms like that of LinkedIn, mm. you can mention them in a very subtle way in your resume. For example, um, you've been recognized by, uh, by your leadership for some outstanding work that you have done, or you've been appreciated by um, your customers for, for delivering high quality projects uh, under tight deadlines. You can in uh, you, you can mention all of that in your in, in your resume. Hmm. Um, it is always a good idea to include a link to your LinkedIn profile where these recommendations are pretty much visible because that will be, you know, it's like proof of pudding is an eating, right? So it's like a very clear um, uh, testimony to what you have mentioned in your resume resonates with what people actually are speaking about you. Um, you can also uh, leverage reference in your cover letter or introduction because like uh, because in any organization referrals are always prioritized okay. so if someone in your network has uh, for example referred you to the job in the company it is always a great idea that when you're first connecting with the recruiter or with the hiring Actually. manager uh, you know just 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 make a mention of that okay. because okay. referrals hmm. are a great way to increase your chances of getting noticed hmm. um, another important thing is um, the strategic mention of um, notable collaborations that you may have 
with the industry leaders or or an influential figure um, uh, in the industry, uh, and that 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 can go in your summary section if you have done some sort of a, some sort of work with them. That can go as a part of your um, uh, you know work section. This will help subtly highlight your network's influence without listing references in your resume. Right, it's all about subtlety though, right? That's the tricky part when you're writing, I feel, resumes, you know, being subtle, being humble, um, but also somehow encapsulating all of your achievements. Just, uh, Ujala, if we could come to you quickly for a summary of everything you've just said, and we'll, we'll leave it at that, but just give us a quick summary of everything you've said. So yeah, I, I feel if you are an active job seeker, I would say, do whatever you can and take a very proactive approach um, with your network and integrating references like we spoke about and your connections very strategically. This will help you significantly boost your chances of standing out. Um, see, these days, all of us know that any AI platform can help you make a resume. But with this ever evolving a digital transformation era that we are all in, and we have been speaking about it every now and then, the skills that you're working on, um, for example, today, uh, may not be relevant in the future. So it is very important of, for all of you all to know where the market is trending right now or, or, or in the near future, and make sure that you are upskilling yourself and filling those knowledge gaps mm. to stay relevant in the market. We've talked a lot about upskilling. Uh, Ujala, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you, Maya, earlier also for bringing us the advice you did. Upskilling is